I tell you what, I wanted to hate this pen. I really did. When I see a pen with such a high price tag, I think to myself, why? Yo, what is going? Crap. Coming back. And I'm back. So, what's going on, guys? Today's video, I'm going to be reviewing some fine liners for you. You're probably familiar with these ones. My uni pins, which are what I use in pretty much every single drawing video I've ever done, ever. But I decided today that I would go to the art store and purchase a whole load of fine liners, and I bought a lot. So, you're welcome. And... <laughs> And I'll be reviewing them right now to see which one is truly the king. Maybe this one will be dethroned, because as far as I'm aware, this is the best. So I look forward to doing this video, and I hope you guys do too. Enjoy. Hey guys, so to kick things off, we're going to start with the price. Now these prices are based on Amazon listing prices, specifically from the brands themselves or the next best thing. I wasn't trying to find diluted prices from third party companies or art stores or anything like that. So just take these prices as what the brands themselves were listing them as or the closest thing to. That being said, I did pay considerably less for some of these from my local art store, obviously being a third party and stuff. I will make a note on the screen of the prices that I pay, but they will be in euros, which are considerably cheaper. If you are using dollars, then just think maybe one and a half times and you'll get the price. So starting off with the Stettler Pigment Liner, a very lightweight pen that comes in an array of sizes, appears to be metal. However, it is actually made of plastic with a very solid nib on the end. Price comes in at $7.02, which is an odd number, but all of our ones today have quite odd numbers. We've got the Faber-Castell Pitt, P-I-T-T -T, Artist Pen. A beautifully designed pen, looks very artistic to say the least. It comes in a size S. S, I'm not too sure what that measurement is exactly. I would have appreciated maybe a more accurate measurement. And also features an extremely lengthy nib, which is quite unusual for these. With a price of $6.92. Next up, we've got the Sakura Micron. An extremely elegant pen right here. It looks very artistic and I do like the style of it. Features all the measurements on the side and claims to be waterproof and fade proof. The nib itself is actually quite unusual. Taking a closer look at it, we find out that the nib itself is actually somewhat pointed rather than the typical rounded nibs that you find on these fine liners. Very interesting indeed. Coming in with a price of $6.86. Coming up next, we've got the Faber-Castell Eco Pigment. This pen features what is probably the most unusual design of all the pens we have today. Makes it claim to be waterproof, and also if we take a close look at the nib itself, it is also similar to the Sakura Micron, in which the nib itself goes to a somewhat point. Price comes in at $5.69. And then we got the Uniball Micro. The design of this pen features a clear plastic area, which I guess is to detect the ink flow level. I'm not quite sure about this, whether it's replacement or not. Um, I would say that this isn't your standard fine liner. However, it does claim to be waterproof and fade proof. So I figured it would fit nicely within this fine liner list and we would give it a go. The uni ball obviously features a ball point. It is not a fine line, but let's see if it performs like one of them. Coming in with a generous price of $2.31. Now the Copic Multiliner SP. Now this is the one that's intrigued me the most because it is by far the most expensive of the fine liners. And I'm very curious as to know why it's so high. This pen itself is one of the most unique ones we're showcasing right here. It has a full metal case with a plastic rim around the nib itself. The ink cartridge itself is replaceable, meaning we can take out the ends as so, and we can replace them in the future. The nib itself is also replaceable. We can pop it out like this and we can replace the nib. This pen comes in at a whopping $12.55. Next up we have the Stabilo. And I apologize for making an error on screen. We have the Stabilo Point 88. This pen comes in a standard 0.4 size and there are unfortunately no variants that I can find. It's a very basic design reminiscent of a school pencil. One issue I have noticed already using this is there seems to be quite a bit of moisture buildup around the nib. Now I'm not sure why that is. It is an ink. I have rubbed it and it is not ink. That said, we have a very generous price of 88 cents. And finally, we have my go-to fine liners, which you guys see me use in every video, but that may change by the end of this one. 
we have the Unipin Fine Line. This pen boasts a water and fade proof pigmented ink. It is also one of the lightest pens featured right here. It's extremely lightweight, comes in a variety of sizes. Nibs themselves are fairly short and very close to the encasing. And the end is a pretty solid piece of plastic lending itself to anyone who likes to chew the end of their pens. The price of this pen comes in at $2.23. So we got a whole wrench. Oh, wait a moment. We're missing one. That's right. We got a Copic Multiliner brush. The design of this Copic pen once again brings that metallic design. However, it is in a plastic casing this time. Claims to be water and Copic proof. Once again, a Copic branded pen with a beautifully designed brush nib, I gotta say. Extremely thin and looks absolutely beautiful. I am not sure if the nibs themselves are replaceable. I couldn't find any information online about this. Please look to the comments in case someone has mentioned it down below. And finally, the price of this pen comes in at $18.36. Line work. So to test the line work of this part of the review, I will be using a scale of one to five, one being the lowest and five being the highest to measure the comfort slash feel and the control that we have over the pens. So let's kick things off with the Copic Multiliner Brush Edition. Now, I found the feel of this pen to be pretty nice, actually. It was a pretty enjoyable experience to try and draw with this. However, the control was just awful. I'm gonna give the control a one based on my personal experience, but I will be fair and say that if you practice with this pen, you'll probably be able to produce some quality work. I would not recommend this for lining, unless you were gonna do some really cool, maybe comic book style of artwork then perhaps this is the pen for you. Moving on to our Stettler Pigment Liner. I gotta say, this thing felt incredible. It felt like rolling on ice. It was very nice, and the control was extremely smooth. There was a slight resistance to the paper, and I am using sketch paper here to review these pens. I should mention that. So there was a slight resistance, but it worked fantastically. Next up, we have the Faber-Castell PITT Artist Pen. Um, I'm gonna give it a one. Uh, yeah, it had a very hairy feel to it. Didn't perform well at all on this paper. It was a very distracting feel. And when you turn as well, when you was making slight turns, you could feel it kicking, so the control was just bad as well. Next up, we have the Sakura Micron. Now, it felt almost perfect. It was a very nice experience to draw with. It felt very smooth, and I did enjoy using it. My only criticism of the pen would be that the nib is slightly smaller than I feel it should be. Although this says it's a point 0.3, it feels extremely small, and it is a little bit distracting. But I give this a 4 and a 5 nonetheless. Next up, we have the Faber-Castell Eco Pigment. Now, I gotta say, this felt considerably better than the other Faber-Castell. It felt a little bit smaller than it is. That was the only grab I have with it, so that's what kept it at a 4 and a 4. Next up, we have the Uni-Bull Eye Micro. Now, while this is one of the smoothest ones that I use, and it felt very, very nice, um, very slippery. It actually felt like drawing on ice. It's a very difficult experience to draw with, and I probably wouldn't recommend attempting any serious detailed line work with this. Next up, we have the Copic Multi-Liner SP, the one I've been looking forward to trying out. Super smooth. Super, super smooth. I give this a 5. Very nice. But I gotta say, in terms of control, it was a little bit slippery. That's the only thing that held it off of being a 5 out of 5. It was a little bit slippery. So I gave it a 4. Next up, we have the Stabilo Point 88. Now this one's a little bit unusual for me because it was a very cheap pen, so I don't want to critique it too harshly. But it did feel like it has a point on the nib. And I know it's very hard to explain, but it feels like there's a slight point on the nib and you're sort of drawing around it. It's quite odd. So... While it felt very smooth and very nice, I give the control a 3 out of 5. Finally, we have the Unipin Fine Line. Very smooth and very controlled. I give it an even 4 out of 4. Okay, so here is a clear review of everything we've just gone through just there. And I'm going to put a tick underneath the ones that have passed the review so far up until this point. Now, keep in mind that I was using sketch paper while doing this. It's a little bit more grainier than, say, calligraphy paper or Bristol board. And I'm also not going to include the brush in this tick situation because I do not believe that this, with my lack of experience, is a fair test for that short review just there. Pigment. So in order for me to test this pigment, what I did was a series of different sized dots, including a square, underneath each of the pens. At the end of this, I'll be grading them a 1 to a 5, with a 5 being the closest to black and a 1 being the furthest. And I will say there are a couple surprises here, but every one of them hit a pretty high benchmark. Now, unfortunately, you will have to take my word for it, as my camera isn't detecting the colours too well. But there are the numbers right there, and I gotta say, no surprise with the Sakura, the Faber-Castell Eco, and the Unipin coming out on top. Oh, and the 
Stabila, which was a big surprise, I gotta say. A bit shocked that a Copic Multiliner SP didn't come out with a 5, but it came out with a 4 alongside the brush, which is still very high quality and very good. The pigment liner... No surprise there with it being a 3, sort of lacklustre, I could have given it a 2 to be honest, it's quite grey. Smudge. So for the smudge test, I decided to do two tests. This first one you're seeing right here, I did two objects, a circle and a straight line, with very heavy block colour on top of them. I then waited 10 to 15 seconds for each one, before running my finger, a clean finger, along each one to see how much it would smudge, replicating what it would be like if we were drawing and you accidentally run your hand across them. Now doing this is obviously not allowing them to dry enough, but it is allowing you to get an idea of how much they will affect your drawing should you make an accident or a mistake and run your hand across it too fast. So here are the results and once again the numbers are 1 to 5 with 5 being the best and 1 being the worst. Couple of big surprises. The pigment liner, a 4, could have given it a 5 to be fair, but only one of these is worthy of a 5 and that is the Stabilo which didn't smudge at all, not even a tiny bit meaning that that had to be a 5, while the Copic Multiliner, the Unipin, and the Stedler Pigment Liner all come with 4. Oh, and the Eco Pigment. Moving on to the second smudge test, this time I did a more realistic test. I did one single line, no overlapping, waited 10 to 15 seconds once again, and then moved a clean finger across it, and the results are much more reliable. Now due to this test being a little bit more fair, I graded these much harsher, ranked on how much they would ruin your artwork should they smudge. So a couple of surprises here being the Sakura Micron. I gave it a 3 which sounds very harsh, but bearing in mind this is how much it would ruin or affect your artwork at the time. No surprise with the Uniball, but I must say the rest of them are all pretty much near perfect with absolutely no smudging, so you can't go wrong with any of them. You bleed. So in order for this to be a fair test, what I did here was a series of squiggly and straight lines underneath each one of them. I then waited 5 minutes for them to dry. I then picked up a nice bright colour. And with the squiggly lines, I went across side to side. And then for the straight lines, I went up and down against them. Now the idea of this is to see which one of them smudges, bleeds, or causes discoloration to the bright colour. Now unlike before, I'm not going to be doing a numbers chart here, I don't think it's very relevant. What I'm going to be doing here instead is showing you the four that performed exceptionally well, either causing no discoloration or very, very minimal. And there is one standout here amongst the group, which is the Stabilo, which actually got darker. The fine liner itself became darker, which is actually very useful. The Copic Multiliner, the Unipin, and the Stedtler Pigment Liner kept the colour pretty much as is. I should also mention that during each stroke, I cleaned the end of the brush on a separate sheet of paper, ensuring that there was no crossovers and no smudging. So we've come towards the end of the video, and now it is about time that I gave you my thoughts. But I think we'll start off with the best value one, and I think it goes without saying. The Stabilo, or Stabilo, 0.88 is hands down the best value. It's going to cost you 88 cents, which is ridiculously cheap. And what you get out of it is a damn good quality fine liner. Now it may not perform as well as the other fine liners in terms of practicality and usefulness. And I'm saying that in regarding if I was to use it as an inking method for some of my final pieces of artwork. But that said, it is still a high quality piece of equipment and it passed through all of these tests with flying colors. So I would 100% say that a Stabilo 0.88 is the best value for money but that's not what you guys are interested in, is it? You don't want to know what the best value is. This is a pretty good pen, but it's only the best value. You want to know what the best pen is. Well, this is where it gets complicated because I actually have three best pens. I couldn't really decide on number one, but I did it just for you guys. And that being said, don't be discouraged. Any one of these pens is fantastic and I would 100% recommend them to any one of you. However, there was one final deciding factor. I did a separate smudge test in which I allowed every single one of these lines to dry for four hours for all of the pens. And these three were the best ones except for the Stabilo, and that definitely helped sway my decision right at the very end. <sighs> it's getting cold in here. Ugh. 
let's get on with the list. So starting off with number three, we've got the Copic Multiliner. I tell you what, I wanted to hate this pen. I really did. When I see a pen with such a high price tag, I think to myself, why? And I still think to myself, why? The pen itself has some beautiful gimmicks, allowing you to change the nibs and allowing you to change the ink, which is all well and good. And the change of the nibs is actually fantastic. I've never really been in a situation where I need to change the ink of a fine liner. They pretty much last for a very, very, very long time. That being said, this pen works flawlessly. It is a fantastic pen. It feels fantastic to work with. And I've got to say, looking at the smudge test, leaving that line for four hours, allowing it to dry, the Copic didn't bleed, didn't smudge, didn't do anything with a generous layer of marker. I didn't try my hardest to scribble it away. There was a generous layer of marker, pretty much the standard that you would lay on top of it, and it worked beautifully. The only reason this pen isn't number one, and I'll be completely honest, it is the price. Had this been a much lower cost, I would 100% have made this the best fine liner. Coming up next, we got the Sakura Micron, which was an absolutely incredible pen. It looks fantastic. I enjoyed using it. I love the very slim nib that it has. It is beautiful and such a treat to work with. It is a delight. If you make a mistake, if you need to correct a line, if you need to go back over a line, you can see everything around that nib and you can get right back onto that line and perfectly place yourself right back into the stroke. With that being said, the only thing that let this pen down and stopped it from being the best fine art was the smudge test. During the smudge test, I left the ink again for four hours, after which I applied some alcohol marker to it and it did smudge. Now saying that, I didn't allow drying times between each layer, which usually I would recommend you do, trying to maintain single layers over each of the lines. But seeing as the multi-liner itself didn't bleed at all, I can't give this any leeway, and I gotta say it does bleed a very small amount, but it still does. I'm gonna sit up for this and put it right here. The uni pin. Oh yes, that's right. I mean, I knew it was going to be number one. It is a fantastic pen. And I didn't tell you guys this, but this is the pen that I've had for five years. I didn't buy a new one. Every single pen that has featured in this video was brand spanking new. This one was not. I kept this pen for five years and it contended with everything. It was the second darkest pen behind the eco pigment. The bleed test that we performed just there bled ever so slightly. The nib itself is a little bit unusual and might take some practice to get used to, but I'm telling you, this is fantastic for line variation. The way the nib is designed will allow you to rotate and tilt and get a nice variation on your lines. It is a little bit chunky and a little bit thick, so it is quite hard to go back over your lines, but this thing costs, I can't believe it, $2.23 from UniP themselves. That is mind-blowing. Effectively, this means you could buy six different variants of this for the price of one Copic or three of them for the price of one Sakura. I'm sorry, but those minor differences, once you factor in the costs, that's it. It's still the king. So in summary, guys, you got three quality fineliners right there. And while I do vote the Copic Multiliner as probably the best fineliner, for value for money, it has to be the Unibin. But hey, this is just my personal preference. Yours may be different. And you know what? Change my mind. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching the video and I really do hope you enjoyed it. I just want to say a big thanks to everyone for all the support and uh, this was a new style of editing for me and a new video for me. It actually took me 17 to 18 hours to record and edit this entire video. It was a very long and daunting task, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it informative. Every pen on this list performs well in its own right, bar a couple, but most importantly, take all of this with a grain of salt. The top three that I mentioned are by far the best, but the rest of them aren't bad choices. So I would definitely recommend that you go out, try a few different fineliners, and see which one works best for you. I've been ADC Art Attack, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.